<laughs> because I am going to go and get some hand tattoos. I just, I love it so much. I didn't want to take any out because I want to recommend them all. <laughs> Lauren's got stuck. <laughs> <laughs> there were stones there that she stood on. Uh, they are no longer there. This tank was out there. <laughs> 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 That's it, you sell it. a bit of a quiet one but i did also do one of my favorite things as of this year so far which is go to north berwick which is this little tiny seaside town lauren joined me for the trip and it was honestly exactly what i needed i did have other plans for my birthday initially but i just ended up not wanting to do anything that required too much energy because i've only been in edinburgh for like four days of february and 
I am very much a homebody. You will have seen my excitement upon returning home every single time in my last two vlogs. <laughs> so I didn't really want to go anywhere that would require me not being able to return to my own home by the end of the day, which is what my initial plan was going to be because I was going to go through to Glasgow, but very much preferred the little seaside day trip in North Berwick instead and it was such a nice day like everything just worked out in our favour it was so sunny and it was just such a calm quiet beach it was so nice and like a very typical Pisces I just felt so much calmer around the water so it was a very lovely day and now I'm about to do something <laughs> very exciting because I am going to go and get some hand tattoos Nothing dramatic, they are very like dainty, delicate ones, but I just have been wanting these for so long. This is probably going to sound really strange to anybody who hasn't experienced it themselves, but I just feel like there's something missing from my hands. Very specifically this part on this finger feels like it needs a band on it of some sort. <laughs> And I used to wear midi rings there all the time because of it, but I just lose midi rings. Like I am not careful enough to not have things just slide off my fingers if they're even vaguely loose. So uh, tattoos is my answer. And I know that hand tattoos are very controversial, I guess. I think people tend to have a very negative outlook on them in terms of them fading and spreading and just generally how they wear over time. But I have personally never looked at somebody's hand tattoos and been like, why did you do that? Like, I just think they look really, really cool. And yeah, I'm only getting a few little decorative bits on each of my fingers. I'm not getting anything actually on the back of my hands because I don't want anything like too overwhelming. <laughs> but we're gonna go do that. I have had tattoos before. I've got the two on my arms, wrists. I don't quite know what this area would be called. And then I do also have my collarbone one, which I have never regretted these. I love them so much. I did have a little bit of a wobble in when I booked the hand tattoos to be like, well, my God, what if it doesn't suit me? But I think that's just going to happen every single time I book in a tattoo. So all I know is that to me, it feels very right. <laughs> and I've never once regretted any of the tattoos that I've got. So we're gonna add more to it. And I am so excited. The tattoo artist that I'm going to is actually London based, but she's doing a guest spot in Edinburgh over my birthday weekend. It just felt like a sign. So I'm going with it and we're gonna go do that. I'm actually not too scared of the tattoo process itself because these didn't hurt me. And like, this is on my bone. These are on my bones. But I am anticipating the fingers being a little bit more spicy. So I think we're going to come back with some very dramatic looking red hands by the end of this. But hopefully the next few days I'll be able to show you what they look like. And oh my god, it's actually happening. This has been like years in my brain. It feels so surreal that in a few hours they're going to be here. Like my hands will feel complete in some way. <laughs> I'm excited. It is Saturday, the following Saturday. Okay, so two things. One, I have chopped a good chunk of my hair off. It used to be like down to my waist. Um, and now it's up here. But because I messed up the front part, you're gonna be seeing me with this hairstyle for a little while until it grows out enough for me to fix it. So, <laughs> and two, here are my hand tattoos. I am so happy with them. They're a bit crispy right now. But I just love how minimal these are. This is giving me grief at the minute. Like, it's just clearly the part that's got the most ink on it. And my goodness, can I tell? <laughs> but yeah, I've just got these little dots. And honestly, I am amused at the minute because it feels like I have Braille on my hands. 
just because it is in the healing process. Now, the tattoo artist did say that it's probably going to fade over the next month and then towards the end of March, which it now is March somehow, but I will have another appointment with her to basically do it again to try and get my hands to accept the tattooing basically. So I am just so happy, like this feels so me. <laughs> and when I showed my patrons, actually multiple people were just like, it seems like they've always been there. So yeah, I just, I'm, I'm really pleased. And my tattoo artist was just so, so lovely. She had just such a calming atmosphere around her. She had such a common personality. She just seemed the most wholesome person and I felt so at ease the second I met her. So I'm gonna leave a link to her Instagram down in the description box because if you are in the UK, she does tend to do guest spots and things as well. She is primarily based in London, but she was doing a guest spot in Edinburgh and will be coming back to do so at the end of March. So if you like sort of ornamental tattoos and little dainty delicate things, then Highly recommend her. She's called Gazal and I just am so happy to have found someone so lovely to do these. <laughs> For the inevitable questions, it did hurt, like obviously I'm getting a needle shoved in my fingers, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, but I do have quite a high pain tolerance because chronic illness life, so <laughs> I really didn't think it was all too bad. And I do always just assume the absolute worst, so I probably expected way worse, which probably contributed to the fact that I nearly fainted. <laughs> with this hand, I was completely fine, but then with this hand, I just really suddenly felt faint and was just like, can I lay down? I was completely fine after like a few seconds, but it's happened multiple times as well when I've had ear piercings. I have been advised that it's probably because I do get so anxious about it and I really anticipate it feeling a lot worse. And then when it doesn't, the adrenaline doesn't have anywhere to go besides my brain. And so I feel faint, <laughs> which you really would think would be a lesson for the anxiety to just calm itself before anything happens. But apparently not. <laughs> Hopefully I'll be fine next time though, if that's the case, because I can adjust my expectations accordingly. <laughs> but I don't know. Anxiety is not one for logic, so maybe not. Either way, it really wasn't that much of a problem. I did have to sport some lovely rubber gloves for 24 hours and I had to go into the supermarket wearing them on the way home, so <laughs> I looked a little bit murderous. Yeah, that was fun, but otherwise, it's been a pretty simple healing process. I work from home, so I feel like there's not anything to like, you know, anything that's going to cause a problem for my hands because I just sit and tap away at home. Like it, it's not a problem. <laughs> but yes, anyway, so as I said, it's now Saturday. I didn't really vlog through the week just because I've been having a flare up. I have been just passing out in bed pretty much every day after work. So I haven't really been doing much of anything, but I am finally back on my reading cake. I think because I was so busy in February, now that I'm going into March, I'm just like, oh my God, I want to read everything. So I did actually just finish reading Lady of Embers by Melissa K. Rorick, which is a series I have been talking about literally since the start of the year because this is the Lady of Darkness series. And I read the first book, rated it four stars, became obsessed. I read the second and third book, rated both of those five stars. And now I have read the fourth book and <laughs> it's gone back down to a four star, but mainly just because we have been introduced to so many more characters, so many new sort of variations in the plot that I needed the time to become reinvested again almost. With the previous ones, especially the second and third, I think because I already knew all of the characters, I was already so heavily invested in them, their stories, their bonds, everything about them. It was very easy for me to fall into those stories. Whereas with this one, because we have got new things sort of shifting around, new dynamics to contend with, it just took a little bit longer for that. But I will tell you, when I finished this book, I gasped like this ends on such a mic drop moment i just oh, it was so good and i never know what to expect with the series like i have no idea i wouldn't even try predicting what was going to happen in any of these books i am absolutely obsessed and on, honestly as well considering this is a romanticy series i feel like there's a certain level of spiciness that you would expect and it does have that like i'm i'm gonna be real with you it's spicy at times but one thing that I really appreciate about this book in particular is that we see different versions of that and there was this really like sweet scene of people figuring things out together and 
communicating through it all and just really I don't know like it wasn't just over dramatic metaphors and while that is there don't get me wrong like this is very much a series that quite similar to people like Sarah J Mars it's got like Faye and all these different creatures who have like an intensely strong bond and everything feels like you know they're making a whole new universe or something it does have that but I think as well, Melissa Roick just managed to show that she is capable of writing so many different dynamics and different types of scenes that I was like... <laughs> I just, I love it so much. So, so much. This is one of my favourite series ever now. Like, it's just, it's blowing my mind the more I read. And I think the next book is actually the final book in the series. There is a novella as well that I need to find, but... I almost don't want it to finish now, although she does have another series that's on the go, so I could just jump to that one, but I don't want to leave these characters behind. Although I will say I'll probably be pretty glad knowing the outcome as long as my favourites are safe, <laughs> which is always the, the tricky part, huh? But I will be ready to leave the emotional anguish behind because I am so invested in these characters that I just sit here stressed when <laughs> reading this book. So maybe my emotions and my heart and my soul and everything in me could do with a break from Melissa K. Rorick, but also I don't know how to stop. I don't know when I'll get around to reading the fifth book, but it's a high priority. In the meantime though, my main priority for now is going to be starting and hopefully finishing maybe question mark um Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. I don't think I will finish it this weekend because uh, that would be some intense reading but this is the or was <laughs> the book club pick for my patreon discord my patreon discord i mean we do have discord my patreon <laughs> for january and february is it march 2nd yes and that's where i'll leave that so I have been kind of procrastinating doing this because I really want to get into annotating books again. I love, love, love annotating books, but it takes me a lot longer than what I've been wanting to read. Like recently, like in recent months, I've been reading almost with an abandon that I don't know how to stop. Like I have been reading book after book after book after book, and I'm just, not, I didn't want to slow that down in any way, but going into 2024, I really had this thought of just wanting to engage with some of my reading more so I won't do it with every book but every so often there is going to be a book that I annotate and specifically with my Patreon book club picks because we do a bi-monthly book club and I just want to be able to have a show that I one read this for a reason and two actually engaged with the text we have little like book club prompts that we're all going to be talking about and we typically have a live show towards the end of the period to chat about it so I'm hoping I can also add everybody else's thoughts to this as well and alongside that I'm also going to make videos showing the annotation process so I'm just all sorts of excited but yeah I have been procrastinating because like I said the chronic fatigue has been flaring so I didn't really have the energy to sit and pay attention and engage with a book at that level so I haven't been picking it up but now I have at least a little bit of energy and it's my first weekend in a long time in which I don't have anything on so now is the time to start this and I'm hoping I can start reading it this evening. I have actually read this before. I read this one in 2016, so long time ago now. And I absolutely loved it in 2016. I had rated it 4.5 out of 5 stars. I don't know why I didn't quite rate it the 5 stars, but we'll see if that still stands now. This is basically the first in a very, like, almost classic YA fantasy story in that it was so popular back in, you know, the 2010s onwards. And in this one, we are following a girl called Karu who has two lives. So she is an art student, a very talented art student, sort of by day but then she also lives this other life in which she is almost like a messenger or an errand girl for this chimera a, a monster of sorts because she can travel between these doors that join together two different worlds and so she is an errand runner and you know she's doing a good job balancing these two lives but then it's soon discovered that the doors aren't locking they're just opening and the two worlds are getting all sorts of messed up mixed up where they're not meant to be and so she ends up 
getting into this whole sort of investigation of why and trying to stop it from happening. I vaguely remember certain things about this, but nowhere near enough for me to confidently say that I would be able to explain the plot any further than a basic synopsis. So like I said, I'm intrigued to see what I think now, <laughs> because obviously I'm much older now. The interesting thing with Lainey Taylor books is that I read both this and Strange the Dreamer, rated them both 4.5 stars, but then I just never continued the series. So I do want to revisit both of them and continue and hopefully finish both series. So but we're gonna do that. And I think as well, while I'm on this little kick of annotating and everything, I just, I really want to get back into having some sort of reading journal. So I used to really keep up with a reading journal and I don't know why just as of recent, maybe the past year or so, I've just not been able to keep up with anything like that. But I was watching some of Jess's videos from Sunbeams Jess and she did one recently about note taking. She does quite extensive notes when she is reading and it did just inspire me to keep up with some sort of reading journal again. Now I did try this in January, but I think just the way that I'm approaching reading journaling needs to change somewhat because it's not necessarily that I want it to be like a pretty aesthetic journal, it is just I want to write down my thoughts because I want to be able to actually give extensive thoughts in videos, reviews, on Instagram, wherever. Like I said, I, I miss engaging with books to the extent that I was in uni, for instance. I don't want to like do a whole deep dive into what I'm reading because it is just a hobby, like it is just a, a casual thing, but I do love looking back through my old reading journals where I would just write notes upon notes upon notes of my thoughts on books and I want to have it back. So in pretty apt timing actually, my friend Catherine, God bless her, she sent me this beautiful notebook which is covered in mushies and plants and it's just such a beautiful colour scheme as well. And I didn't know this was coming, this just arrived in the mail and it was such a nice surprise because she added a little note just saying, saw this and thought of you and I just, it was so sweet. Now usually when I get a new notebook I don't end up using it for a while because I don't know what to use it for. But then I was just like, the size of this is really nice <laughs> like it's it's not quite a4 and it's also a little bit wider and the paper's really nice and i was just like Do you know what this this is going to be my reading journal so this is just going to be here for general thoughts so that i can give better reviews better thoughts in videos i can return to this and you know say what i'm thinking but I am also, like I said, going to be annotating this one anyway, so we're probably going to have many a thought on this book at least. And that is going to start this evening while I am actually energised enough to do anything. <laughs> I have definitely been taking advantage of having any sort of energy because I have tidied my flat, which was very much overdue, and I feel so much better for it now. So I think for the rest of today, I'm just going to play Dreamlight Valley, probably have a bath. Although I do need to keep my hands from soaking in water, so I'll just be like <laughs> over the side of the bath. <laughs> and then do some reading. I may also read some manga because I have been saying that I'm going to finish the Rosenblood series. I think since December, maybe January, I, I don't know. But I have not done that and it's purely because I don't want it to end. But I've not read manga in a little while, so I might, I might do that. I might commit. We'll see. It's happening. I am going to finish this book today, which I was hoping for, but I didn't expect. But I am very much enjoying my reread of this book so far. And I have done many an annotation. So I didn't know how the annotation process would go because I haven't done it in quite a while. I think the last time I did it was when I was reading The Secret History. And it does typically take me a while to annotate things. But I think I figured out my process for this is... While I'm reading, I'll just highlight. Maybe I'll make some initial notes, but then once I need a break from reading, I will come back and sort of elaborate on those notes, add some more, and then maybe do some drawings, things like that. And I will soon end up with things like this that I just end up really loving. So very much enjoying my annotation process of this so far. And also my note taking, because I have indeed started my note taking with this book. So we have some some thoughts. I forgot how nice Lainey Taylor's writing is because she is being descriptive in a way that forces you to remember that our main character Karu is an artist. She is viewing the world in a painter's imagination I guess and even in some of the bleakest scenarios she manages to zone in on a specific detail and from the very first page I made a note that she is very good at romanticizing 
the mundane. And I just really love that. I am somebody who also likes to romanticize my life. And so seeing that reflected in a book as well and in such a beautiful way is making for such an enjoyable reading experience. And I've really picked up on some of the themes that Lainey Taylor seems to have kept going through this book so far, because we definitely have like a contrast going on between descriptions. She'll go from describing something that's really beautiful and fairy tale-esque to describing something that is really grim and gory. It's definitely keeping me on my toes. And as far as the story goes, I really cannot remember all too much about this book from my original read. It is quite insta-lovey, but for good reason. I haven't gotten to the reason yet, but I do remember there being a reason and there are hints to a reason. Insta-lovey, but maybe not. And either way, <laughs> Lady Taylor manages to write their interactions in a way that has me weak. Like, I just... I fall for these tropes every time. There's one which I shared on my Instagram, let me find it, because I was just like... <laughs> so Karoo is talking about knives and she says, beautiful, aren't they? And it says, beautiful, he agreed. And he might have been talking about the knives, but he was looking straight at her. <laughs> I am such a sucker for these things. <laughs> so I'm already just like loving this book and especially as well, I forgot how much I loved Susanna. Like Susanna and Karoo's friendship in the story is just top tier. The dialogue between them is so amusing and like I said the story itself is proven to be quite a, a unique experience even still after reading YA fantasy for years and years. There are things within this book that still make it stand out amongst other ones. For instance, Karoo doesn't actually take on the guilt of absolutely everything that's ever happened which I think a lot of main characters do. So yes I am very much enjoying this. I probably will do more talking about this book within the video of me annotating it but just generally I I'm really enjoying this again. I don't think it's going to be like a new favourite or anything, but I feel like it's still going to land somewhere around four stars. I do have about 150 pages left, so my only plan for this evening is to finish this, so I will let you know my final thoughts on this once I do so, but I also completely forgot to talk about Hamilton. How did I do that? I went to go and see Hamilton and I could have cried just from being in the room, the room where it happened, oh my goodness. I have been obsessed with Hamilton since I was in college, which was... how many years ago was that now? This would have been when I was 17 and I've just turned 26. Nine years! I didn't even know Hamilton was out that long, Jesus. Anyway, I was in college when I first became obsessed with Hamilton and I used to listen to it every single day on repeat while doing my work. And I have continued to be obsessed with it to this very day. Of course, I had watched the recorded version on Disney, but for the first time ever is doing a tour within the UK and I've seen it. I went to the opening night in Edinburgh and it was just... <laughs> I went with Cody and I think we we sat there we had such good view like thank you past me from a year ago who booked these tickets because we were right at the front of the upper circle we could see everything on the stage and genuinely i saw the set of the stage in front of me and i could have started crying because i was just like i it's only just processing now that i'm actually about to see this and the actors the performers the singers whatever you call them they were so talented i loved the guy who played hamilton and they had added this sort of little quirk of their own in which all of the men in it were just sort of like bantering around more and it was just so entertaining. I loved it so incredibly much and I actually cannot believe that I have now seen both Hades Town and Hamilton within like a week of each other and they have been musicals that I've wanted to see in person for years upon years now and I, I've done it! I, oh. <laughs> so yeah that was that was something that was something that has uh I still don't think I've recovered from, to be honest. So yeah, fun times all around. <laughs> Thank you.
here to talk about some books. <laughs> so this vlog has taken me a hot second to actually edit because while it started at the end of February I have been experiencing a flare-up that has lasted a few weeks and so I've not really had the energy to edit a video in my evenings and so and it just means that you've got an extra long vlog really but in the meantime I have been reading and while I wouldn't usually include like every single book that I've been reading I don't really want to skip any because all of these have been excellent reads and so I'm gonna tell you about them all. So I know that through most of this vlog I was reading Daughter of Smoke and Bone, which I have now finished and my patrons and I will actually be doing a book club live show for this later today. So excited to have that one sort of wrapped up and ready to go. But just to give you my final thoughts on this, I did end up rating it four stars. This was really strong until there was a certain point where something is revealed and it suddenly makes some of the insta-lovey moments make a bit more sense. But I think from that point it almost read like this was two different books and this is something that some of my patrons said as well so I do find it quite interesting that I didn't really pick up on that when I first read it whereas now it was so glaringly obvious I was like oh because we literally did just shift perspective entirely and it did feel as if we should have had a much more seamless sort of transition into this discovery and maybe just a bit more of a complex way of telling that story I don't know the second half of it did let me down just a tad but not enough for me to dislike the book as a whole so I rated it four stars I will be continuing with the series and I am excited to see what my patrons think in our live show later this evening so we shall see and then I did very swiftly move on to A Tempest of Tea by Hafsa Faisal. This is a YA fantasy book that has vampires and it follows a girl called Arthi who runs a prestigious tea shop but it's actually a front for like a vampire establishment and she's very protective of this place and she ends up getting into some sort of dodgy deal to try and save it. Now this is very much described as having Six of Crows vibes, Peaky Blinders vibes. I haven't watched Peaky Blinders so I can't speak on that but just from what I've seen that I can definitely see that. And there's something about Half Sophia Sal's writing that is just very engaging. I could not stop turning the pages, I couldn't stop listening to this book and I really really love the characters but I had this really strange experience where as much as I loved the characters I didn't like the relationships that they ended up focusing on I guess. So every time multiple characters came up as a dynamic I was just kind of like eh. <laughs> and I did initially rate this four stars but I might actually drop it down to a 3.5 stars because compared to the other four stars that I've got here this one is just like a little bit less. But I really did like the vampire scene, what Hassa Faisal did in terms of vampires living amongst humans. And also this like criminal underground vibe is always something that I find so intriguing because it's either a miss for me or it's a massive hit. It's something that always reminds me of the bone season. So I typically do get along with them if it's done right. <laughs> so I do think it adds an edge to the story that a lot of people will end up loving and this is just bound to be a YA fantasy book that a lot of people think suits the hype and so I did just want to mention my quick thoughts on that one. But then we have... <laughs> I'm running out of like space to put things. The Crimson Moth. This is again a YA fantasy that is kind of a romanticy but not in the sense that you would typically associate because obviously if you say romanticy a lot of people are like oh it's spicy but it is YA so calm calm yourselves. <laughs> but this is quite literally the blossoming romance between a witch and a witch hunter and it has serpent and dove vibes. I would actually say in terms of like, I don't want to call it spice levels but you know, in terms of romance I would put it on the same level as serpent and dove in that it's a little bit higher in age I would say. But this book really really impressed me because I was so engrossed in the story. I will say that just in general this book would need to come with a content warning of self-harm because there's a lot to do with self-harm in terms of the magic system specifically in this book so do bear that in mind if you are interested in this book and also in America this is called The Heartless Hunter so bear that in mind as well because it looks like a completely different book. It looks so different in America. It's got a different title, completely different cover. This is the Fairy Loot edition so this is what it looks like and it is honestly absolutely beautiful. I just cannot get over it. Ah, it's so shiny and then we do have like a variation of the traditional cover on the dust jacket underneath as well. Anyway besides the point reading this book I just absolutely addicted. It took me a little while to get into it honestly and I wasn't sure if this would live up to the hype that I've seen so many people talk about but I almost fell into it without knowing. Before I realised what was happening, I was so like... <sighs> <laughs> 
it became very intense very quickly and it wasn't because the pace just rapidly picked up or anything it was more that I became so tuned into their emotions and seeing this sort of push and pull, enemies to lovers sort of dynamic going on was just so engaging and I could not escape from it after a while. And I think there is something particularly impressive about an author who manages to write the inevitable in a way that still pulls on all of your emotions. Like you know what's going to happen and yet you can't help but react to it. You can't help but hope for something different or something better, something... It just, all of these emotions were coming out of me in this book. And I think it is because, for the most part, swapping between these two perspectives, you do see them try to one-up each other. Both of them are incredibly intelligent and they're both suspect to the other one's suspicion. And so they're both trying to avoid the other one getting too suspicious and trying to stay one step ahead of the game the entire time and that's the sort of dynamic that I love reading about because I'm just like oh it's so like gritty and something you can really sink your teeth into and there were so many moments that just had me absolutely weak like when people try to deny their thoughts and feelings and then they would have like a dramatic burst of emotions and I'm just like oh, it's all coming out <laughs> That was this book. It was such a push and pull sort of situation between these two and I ate it up. It was so good. And I'm really hoping that with this being a duology, it is everything that the Serpent and Dove series promised and then failed to be because I loved Serpent and Dove, but then the second and third book I just did not like. So I'm hoping that the sequel of this can sort of give me what I had wanted from that series because that was such a letdown. This one, Dare I say that I may end up enjoying it even more than Serpent and Dove? We shall see, we shall see. But yeah, I rated it 4.5 out of 5 stars. I am obsessed. So, I had an evening where I wanted something that was a bit more easy breezy to read. I didn't quite know what I wanted, I just knew that I felt very burnt out and I didn't want to focus on anything that would be too taxing on the brain. And so I picked up The Dead Romantics because this one is a very sort of, I don't want to say a low stakes fantasy, but it's a sort of fantasy where it's very minimal. It's not like a whole new world or anything, it is urban fantasy. And so we don't have to learn a new magic system or a new way of mapping the world or anything like that. It was just a case of our main character can see ghosts. This is a romance between our main character who is a ghost writer for a very famous romance author and she's struggling to hand in a manuscript and her new editor who just so happens to be a ghost. <laughs> and again, this was a situation that I was just impressed that I had so many emotions towards the inevitable. I did not expect to enjoy this book as much as I did and honestly I think that's part of the reason why this actually ended up becoming a new favourite of mine because I had such low expectations not because I think it sounds terrible or anything clearly because I've got it but just because this isn't really my sort of read it's been described as fun and I know that a lot of Ashley Poston's other books especially her YA books are the sort to be like geeky romances. She is a fan fiction author and it's just not something that I'm typically interested in and so I didn't know if this would be the sort of tone of a book that I would like but oh my god I ended up being so impressed because Ashley Poston manages to write both grief and humour in a way that was just so masterful I feel because there is a very big theme of parental death and grief in this book especially since our main character can see ghosts and so there is a lot of talk on that subject and it's not one that I would recommend reading if you are recently experiencing a similar thing maybe after some time but maybe not immediately because there are just very poignant thoughts and sentiments being casually shared in this book but in a way that doesn't feel heavy-handed and having lost a parent myself at a young age I was just kind of glad that a book like this exists because it felt so authentic in how it represented somebody just going about their day and then remembering the fact that somebody had died just in the middle of it and your brain just provides that sentence as if it was relevant to what you were doing when it's not but it just really sort of clangs through you and you know makes you feel some kind of way in the middle of everything you're doing and everything else around you is just normal whereas you're going through this moment of realization all over again and it's just <sighs> really simple things like that that I think a lot of books tend to miss out on especially because when you do read a lot of fantasy books there is a lot of death <laughs> in them and I've always found the topic of grief within a fantasy book something that can be somewhat lacking but not in this one not in this one but as a contrast to that you do also see so much love and humor and just 
hope and positivity in this book as well. And what I will say is that this book really lends itself well to audiobooks. This is such a good audiobook, especially because of the humour and the ways that the dialogue is written. It just works so well in audio format. So if you can listen to the audiobook, then I highly recommend doing that. I actually listened to this on BookBeat, which... <laughs> Random little side note, you might have seen me mentioning that I have been using BookBeat recently and I have been loving it. They measure your allowance in hours and so I do actually have an affiliate link which will give you guys a free trial for 40 hours which can get you, depending which books you choose, it can get you typically around two to four audiobooks within a month which is a very decent allowance if you ask me considering other audiobook places will only give you like one book a month. So if you do want to give it a go then the link is down below. <laughs> but besides the point, this just really came out of left field and took me by surprise. It really wasn't something that I had too many expectations of beforehand and then I just was so enthralled by it. It is the epitome of bittersweet. It's such a whirlwind of a story and just had this really careful but beautiful balance between grief, loss, but love and hope and joy. And yes, I did know where the story was going, but I didn't even care. Like, I just absolutely loved it. It's definitely felt like a comfort book <laughs> and I'm now very excited to read The Seven Year Slip because I do also own that one and I just really didn't think anything of these books beforehand and I have been oh my god I have been shown otherwise quite literally a do not judge a book by its cover moment for me so yeah new favorite from me I really was not expecting that and then at the minute I am currently reading The Phoenix King by Aparna Verma which is the first one in a trilogy this one is an Indian inspired fantasy and follows a few different people actually which I'll get onto that in a second because I do have points to be made about that. <laughs> I do find it quite hard to summarise what this book is about because it is quite literally a political fantasy and you are just following the looming handing over of the throne but you're following the current monarch, the heir to the throne and also somebody else who we see the political allegiances change constantly and there's also like a, a blossoming of romance in this because we've got this artwork inside which I think honestly was my main selling point for this book but this is very heavy on the political fantasy and I'm only about just over halfway through. I have been annotating this one so you can see my little tabs but what I was just mentioning before about it being interesting with the narration because the three perspectives that we have like I said we have the current reigning monarch which is a king called Leo and you see him one proved to be an unreliable narrator because he may or may not be descending into madness but two you see him justifying a lot of things because he's trying to protect both the throne and his daughter who is about to take the throne and so his perspective on things is through this bias of trying to protect a lot of people but to lengths which can't really be justified anymore. Then you have the heir herself and so she is preparing to take the throne but she feels very unprepared but she's also in this weird limbo between upholding the tradition that her family has always had versus being part of a new generation that can see these rebellions going on and wanting to enact some sort of change. And then like I said we also have the perspective of this guy who is a warrior, a soldier, and he has proven to change allegiances before and so we have his perspective on trying to suss out what the better position is. And it is making for a very complicated political fantasy that I am honestly unsure where it's gonna go. Like I don't know what the sort of outcome of this can be to have all three of these perspectives be on the same page, you know? Like be aligned enough to make it work and so I am very intrigued to continue this book, see where we end up and also how the romance comes about because I've not gotten there yet. We've started to see the inklings of it but not anything too crazy so intrigued to see if that will convince me if it seems believable, authentic but either way I am really enjoying this right now. I probably won't include my final thoughts in this vlog because I do actually want to wrap it up and get this out to you guys so that you can have something to watch at last. It's been a couple of weeks now so I would recommend following me on Goodreads if you don't already because that's where you'll see like my final rating of this one and also just any other thoughts in real time really so yeah I might on my Instagram show some of my annotations of this once I'm done. I don't know yet because I don't know how intense my annotations are going to be but considering this is the amount of tabs I've got on it already I feel like we might have enough for like a cute little reel or something, I don't know. But yes, so we have had some excellent reads recently. They're all the wrong way around, but you get the gist. And I did just want to very quickly talk about all of them because I was trying to almost narrow it down so that you guys wouldn't be sat here for too long hearing 
me babbling away about all the books because I've kept up with the reading journal. I'm very happy about that. But I was just looking at all of my notes like, oh my god, how do I summarise this? But I didn't want to take any out because I want to recommend them all. <laughs> So hopefully it wasn't too long of a babble for you all. But I am going to wrap up this video here because I want to start a different vlog with a little bit of a theme to it, which I'm excited about. So yes, I am going to love you and leave you here. But I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've been reading some excellent books recently. Do let me know down in the comments what you're currently reading. And if you made it this far into the video, then leave some sort of star emoji down in the comments. But like I said, I'm going to love you and leave you and I will chat to you again very soon. Goodbye.